Thank you. You know, one of the many paradoxes of the human race is the old belief that you can tell a person's character by his face. There are probably more bosses and personnel managers who think they can tell what kind of a worker a man or a woman is going to be and how honest he or she is by his or her face than you could count. And according to qualified psychologists, it's all a lot of baloney. In fact, one time they tested this theory. They asked hundreds of people to look at a collection of photographs of men's faces. They were told that one man was a habitual criminal, another a businessman, a lawyer, another a psychopathic killer, and so on. None of the people could agree on the right pictures. Some of the most brilliant men on earth have looked like the village idiot, and some of the most intelligent-looking people hold down the simplest jobs and are way down on the ladder of intelligence. People still believe that a high forehead is a sign of intelligence, a square jaw a sign of determination, Spaced teeth, oddly enough, were supposed to be a sign of a passionate person. Bushy eyebrows denoted a crook. Finely chiseled features were supposed to mean good breeding, whatever that is, and refinement. Really beautiful women, especially blondes, uh, were all stupid. Well, they're all wrong. A brilliant man might have a high forehead, but it has nothing to do with his brilliance. A blonde might be dumb, but she might also be the smartest woman in town. In short, if you've been a believer that you can tell things about a person by looking at his face, forget it. It's also been proved that the old and almost universally believed notion about Latins and Frenchmen being better lovers and more hot-blooded is also a lot of nonsense. A good rule to remember is to always duck generalizations about people. I know a man who won't hire a man if he sports a mustache. He thinks it's a sign of dishonesty. Uh, you could tell him about men who wear mustaches who are perfectly honest, men such as Thomas Dewey, who cracked the rackets in New York and who is unquestionably of the highest honesty and moral caliber, or of a man like Albert Einstein or a Dr. Albert Schweitzer uh, with the mustaches, wouldn't mean a thing to him. It seems that once a man makes up his mind to believe in an absurdity, it's pretty hard to shake him out of it. He begins to defend himself on the subject. I have another good friend, a writer in Hollywood, who every time he hears a generality about people smiles and says, there are no pianos in Japan. Usually the person who made the generalization about a particular race, minority group, or appearance catches on, but not always. I remember when John used his pet phrase one time and the man to whom he was talking replied, oh really? Yeah, that's probably right. If your son happens to have a receding chin, don't ever call it a weak chin. Some of the bravest men in history had them, men such as General Charles de Gaulle of France. And if your little girl is a blonde with a cute little figure, she can still be the smartest girl in town and one of the wisest and most intelligent wives. You've really got to watch those generalizations. They just don't work out. The next time you hear a generalization, try pulling the one about there being no pianos in Japan. I'll be back in one minute. The Irish are not dumb, the Scottish people are not tight, the English do have a sense of humor. In the words of the poet Johann Schiller, if you wish to know yourself, observe how others act, and if you wish to understand others, look into your own heart. This is Earl Nightingale. Thank you.